In today's video, I'll be showing you how to blur faces like this. The original clip you're seeing right now was originally 1 minute and 43 seconds long. As you can see, the face of my subject has been blurred out. Open a new Lumo Fusion project and load your clip into the project. Duplicate the clip two to three times. You can see the clip has been properly duplicated by looking at these bars under the preview area. The bar on the top is your last clip that you added. You need to make one more duplicate so that you can add an overlay title and replace your last duplicate clip with the overlay title. But first, you'll want to extract the audio from two of your three clips. It's a good idea to mute the master audio. You can do this by tapping the master audio volume icon so that it turns yellow with a slash through it. Then tap the plus sign, add an overlay title, and Pick the title up and place it on top of your top clip. Make sure that the clip extends throughout the whole video. Be sure to select Replace Clip, but keep timeline duration. Open the clip editor and choose this preset with a perfect circle. Delete the text by tapping the trash can. Now you're left with the shape. Make sure you're on the title screen and you can tap on face color to change the color to green. Once you've selected your color, tap on the X to dismiss the color palette. You need to position the green circle over the face of your subject. I would recommend doing this in the frame and fit area. Tap frame and fit and enter a size value. This will ensure that your green circle is big enough to cover your face. I know the specific size that I want to use. You can manually enter sizes by tapping the little pencil. Make sure that the overlay title clip is selected. Move the circle over the face of your subject. And as you play the video, Watch to make sure your subject's face does not move from behind your green circle. Back in the size and position area, add a keyframe at the beginning of the clip. This denotes the original position of your green circle. As you play the video, make slight adjustments to the green circle so that your subject's face is always covered. As you move the green circle around, to cover the face of your subject, a keyframe will be added because you've added the first keyframe. Just play the whole video and adjust the circle until your video is finished. This is the part of this process that takes the most time and requires attention to detail. If you don't get this part right, you'll have to repeat this part of the process so that your face so that your subject's face is not visible at any point in the video this could cause problems with the final effect because the circle may be really big it's better to use keyframes one at a time as you can see i'm going along playing the video and adjusting the circle so that my subject's face is always covered if you want to see the face as you do this, you can reduce the opacity of the green circle by going into blending and reducing the opacity there. I don't recommend moving between the title and frame and fit screens because you'll notice that the circle is over top of your subject's face when you're in the frame and fit area. If you go to the title screen, the circle will move back to its original position. At no point does my subject's face become visible behind the green circle. Once this part of the process is complete and the keyframes have been added, you can add the blur. Watch carefully to make sure that you don't need to adjust any keyframes. I could have adjusted the keyframes a little bit here and throughout the rest of the video, but since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to leave the keyframes as they are. The longest part of this process will be adding the keyframes properly. 
because you have to take into account the movement of the subject. And if you want to see your subject's face as you're doing this, you can reduce the opacity of the circle. But I would recommend keeping the circle a solid color because it's easier to see at a glance if your subject's face moves and becomes visible. The longer the video clip is, the longer the keyframing process will take. But the more you practice using keyframes, the faster you'll get. Now that the circle doesn't move, you can go back to your project. Right now I'm on the title screen and as you can see, the circle has returned to its original position on the screen. You need to add another shape. A rectangle is needed for this next step. Tap the plus sign, tap add shape and choose the rectangle. Take two fingers and expand it out to fit the whole screen. Tap on face color and change the face color to blue. This needs to be a different face color than the circle was because you're going to key each shape out at different times in the process. Once you've selected your color, tap anywhere to dismiss the color palette. Close the properties of your new rectangle and move it above your circle so that the circle appears on top of the rectangle. The next step is to go to color and effects. Tap on the key icon and remove the circle using the green screen key. Once the green circle is removed, you can go onto the clip below it, go to the color and effects panel for that clip and choose 100% Gaussian blur. This will prevent you from seeing the face of your subject in the final video. Once you've got this clip created, you need to export it out as its own clip for the next step to work. Tap the export icon and wait patiently for the clip to export. You'll find the exported clip inside your camera roll. Make sure that you've selected all photos and videos to see it. You can also see it in the LumaFusion Movies folder. Once you've done that, remove the clips on the top. Notice that when you apply a blur to a clip or any effect, it is applied to the whole clip. So remove the blurred clip and add the clip that you just exported. This is what you will have. Double tap on your new top clip, the blue screen clip that you just added. Go to color and effects, tap the key icon once more, and this time use the blue screen key. You're left with a circle shape, that is blurred. Go back to the main timeline and here is the result. My very first time on a plane. I've never flown before so I'm so excited. This is like one of my dream come true. A very big dream come true for me. Um, I'm so excited for the new adventures that I'm going to have with him and his family. It's something that I have never been more excited about doing than this. I've been, I've been literally dreaming about for like a couple months now. I'm, I'm just thrilled. I'm so excited. I feel like jumping up and down. I'm so excited. And to go on a plane, like, yeah, it's scary because I've never been on one. But the adrenaline and the excitement that I have, like the rush, the feeling that I have in me right now, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. I get to go away. I'm going to be away on my birthday. So I'm going to have a special time in BC for my birthday with Mike and his family and I'm so excited and I love you Mike.